Good morning. Ah, it's a fresh new day. <laughs> a fresh new day with no mistakes in it. One in which took God a while to get me up because he started trying at like 3.30 a.m. But after a lot of jiggles from my husband in the bed and my baby crying out two or three times, I finally got the memo, the heaven memo. It was time to get up much earlier than I had tended to get up this morning and spend time with the Lord. I don't know about you guys, but I am not as nice, not as calm, not as peaceful, not as faith filled when I'm, when I don't get my pre-family awake time with Jesus, you know, so it's my goal to have that every day. It doesn't always work out that way because sometimes I end up taking time at night. My daughter gets in bed so late, but I'm just chit-chatting here while some people are hopping on. You guys share this. This is gonna be good. This is positive. This is powerful. This is some deep revelation out of the Word of God. It's some stuff that I I actually believe and preach, but I'm just going to fit together some scriptures in such a way that I think, you know, when you hear the revelation from God's word, it encourages your faith even more. <laughs> you know, like this is, this is the word of God. This is the truth. We need to get a hold of it because when we believe the truth, when we hear it, how can we believe if we don't hear? So when we hear the truth out of the Word of God and we have it expounded on through an anointing teaching and, you know, examples, it just increases our faith. So I'm going to pray over you guys while some people are hopping on, while you guys share this and tag some people. So Lord God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for a fresh new day. We thank you, God, that your mercies are new every day. We thank you, God, that your goodness and mercy are chasing us down. We thank you, Lord, that you have good things planned for those who fear you. We thank you, God, that we have complete and total victory in all of these things that we face. We are more than conquerors, Lord. We thank you, God, for your spirit. We thank you that you are a wall of fire around us and your glory is in our midst, Lord God. We thank you for the glory that is all filling the earth, Lord. And we ask that you open our eyes to your beauty. We ask, God, that you open our hearts to your love. Lord God, we ask that you make us willing vessels, that you forgive us of our sins, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that we would walk holy and blameless before you, children of light in this wicked and depraved generation, shining like stars in the heaven, not losing our saltiness, being filled to overflow with your spirit, um, being used to, to plant seeds and to reap souls in this end time harvest, Lord God, we just pray your protection over ourselves and our family. We speak and declare that no harm and evil will befall us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. You guys share this. Share this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, my name's Emily Rose Lewis. And go ahead and subscribe. I do prophetic words. I do uh, preaching and teaching. And as the Lord leads, I prophesy. That's not necessarily the main thing that I do. But it, it's prophetic teaching a lot of times. So um, I'm going to read a psalm. This is really good for this time. It's Psalm 2. It's a short psalm. Uh, I got to go over a couple more scriptures. Okay, so Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, let us break the chains and throw off their shackles. Okay, this is talking about Jesus. But, um, so the one enthroned in heaven laughs and the Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have instilled my king on Zion, my holy nation. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. And this is for Jesus, but Christ in us, we are his body. It's for us this morning as a prophetic verse. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession you will break them with a rod of iron you will dash them to pieces like poverty po pottery 
You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son. It means like submit to Jesus or he will be angry. And your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. The key verse in this, though, is ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. The ends of the earth, your possession. So this morning, I'm talking to the Lord and I said, you know, I just heard him say, actually, to me, I want you to ask. I, I'm like, because like, he got me up <laughs> and I knew that he had some things he wanted to say. And really, all I heard him say is, I want you to ask. And he started showing me what he wanted me to ask for. Because the way that the Lord set things up in order to have relationship with us, he wants us to ask for what we need. And he says in his word, you have not. And James, you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss that you would send it, spend it on your own selfish pleasure. So, God is bringing us into a place of oneness with him where all of our prayers are answered. Where everything we ask for, we receive. Is the word of God true? This is what I need to ask you. How many of you guys believe the word of God is true? Tell me, like, hi. <laughs> you know, I believe, I believe. Put something in the comments if you believe the word of God is true. That it is the infallible word of God. And that it, God is not a man that he cannot lie. The word of God is truth. Truth, 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 truth. So why then are our prayers sometimes not answered? Why is it? Why? Because we're not praying the right prayers at times, or we're not praying with the right attitude, heart attitude. So here I am moving through life. I have a massive worldwide vision. I'm already doing things in India and, and in Africa. I have a vision also to be in the Philippines and Europe and, and I mean, huge vision. And I'm little, 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 I mean, millions and millions of dollar vision. And, and, and hundreds and thousands of people helping, you know, <laughs> like it's nothing that I could do by myself. It's just so massive. And, you know, I know some prophets and stuff will say, don't tell people your vision early on. I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Number one, the reason why people would tell you not to do that is because they're like, they might discourage your faith. Nobody's discouraging my faith. I know what God spoke to me. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm going to do. And so I know that the Lord is having me ask every single step of the way. And whether you have a, a vision for a worldwide ministry or a worldwide business or just children or a spouse or, you know, uh, uh, to own a home, whatever it is that God has got for you, God wants us to be so surrendered to him that the desires in our heart are transformed to be all about his glory and all for his purposes to be accomplished in the earth. And this is not just ministry stuff. Whatever our individual plans are, I mean, my son's a ballet dancer. He is called to the ballet world. God has strategically placed his people everywhere. He wants you to lead in whatever he has called you to, whether you're a leader of people or not. It was interesting. It's a little story aside. I'm going to get back into some scripture. Um, my my son's Hong Kong Ballet season 2021, which I posted on my wall. You can go back and watch it. It's a two-minute commercial where they're showing all the different uh, ballet performances they're going to be doing in the season. And, you know, just clips of the photo shoots and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's got this background music. Well, right in the middle, at, right smack in the middle at one minute, between one minute and one minute and 15 seconds, the music stops and they just show a clip of my son. He's trying to talk to this guy about how to hold his arm. My, my son's also into choreographer, uh, chore, uh, choreography and he actually is really good at it. And but he's, he's just talking, saying, you know, now hold your arm like this. And then they go right back in the music. And when I talked to Forrest, I was like, that was so prophetic. He was like, yeah, I, I was wondering about that. It's so random. Like, my friends were like, that didn't fit. That was just strange. Like, what was that even about? It is because his voice is 
needs to be heard. His voice is the one in the company that needs to be heard. There's not other believers. I mean, I, as far as I know, I think there's one other non, you know, that may have been raised Christian. But Forrest is called to have his voice heard. To, to use his position to have his voice heard. It was just the weirdest, most random thing. He has such favor on him. But anyway, so that aside. So God told me this morning, I want you to ask. So I just began to ask. Um, many of you guys might have seen last night on my wall a really long time close friend of mine. I've known her years and years. Oh my goodness, I was hurting so bad last night. I woke up, I was, woke up a couple times in the middle of the night hurting. And, um, she passed away and you know I had prayed for her and asked for her soul and I believe that the Lord gave it gave it because I asked but I have an old tablet where I have lists of names that I've written I mean pages of names of people throughout my life throughout my history where I prayed for their salvation how many and, and I'm not how many of us, I haven't actually been praying over that particular list recently, but how many of us are asking for the salvation of the people that we know? If we are placed in this earth, the people that are around us, our neighbors, our, our family, our old high school friends, you don't have to be in contact with them. You can still pray over them. If they have touched your life, if God has ever brought them in your life, ask for their soul. Ask the Lord. Nobody else may be asking. You might be the only one asking. I have three people the three people that I know of there might be more that have had pretty much what I believe and uh, Alicia I just have to believe it in my heart from what the Lord spoke to me last night um, deathbed conversions of people that I had interceded for sown into prayed for witnessed to and so even to the last breath you know God can still work but so there's there's that we need to be asking for the souls of the people this is when we're asking for the nations we're not just asking for their houses and their properties to you know to spend on our own selfish pleasure we know that from James we're asking for the nations we're asking for people okay let me get into some of this revelation okay I'm gonna read out of Luke and this is really really good this is the word of Jesus and I love where it is okay he's teaching the disciples about prayer he gives them the um, the Lord's Prayer, you know, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, he's telling them how to pray. And then he says, okay, so look where this, the context is tucked in to the verse where Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. So, we listen, like, Jesus' prayers never didn't get answered, y'all. So, he's like, your will be done. Your will be done plug whatever that is and then he says suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say friend lend me three loaves of bread a friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him and suppose the one inside answers don't bother me the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed I can't get up and give you anything I tell you even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship yet because of your shameless audacity he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. I should have probably titled this Shameless Audacity. I might on my, on my YouTube. Shameless Audacity. He's asking in the middle of the night. But here's the key to this verse. And I actually just read this into this verse last week. And it clicked for me. He was asking for food for a friend. He was asking for something for somebody else okay when we are asking for somebody else when we are asking unselfishly and there's another about a persistent widow okay where I don't believe she's asking for somebody else but in this particular uh, setup here in Luke the way that Luke has it out he's telling us how to pray then he's giving us this parable and he's cush sandwiching this parable between, this is how you pray, pray the Lord's will, this parable. And then he says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks find, and the one who knocks, 
the door will be open. And then he goes, which one of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, again, asking for somebody else. You know, <laughs> he's saying, how much more will your father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So ask him for the salvation of other people. Now, this is the bottom line of the ask. But in within that, cushion within that is us fulfilling our purpose in the earth. Us being positioned financially. Us being positioned in families. Us being positioned in Christian communities. Us having governmental systems that don't shut us down. Us all of these things that we seek and that we need we don't focus on those things we focus on the ask for the nations ask for the souls and let the prayers flow from that intention in our heart to see others come into the kingdom and they will be answered i'm going to i'm going to give you some more little um some more scripture here to encourage this. Uh, actually, okay, if you go, this is also in Matthew 7, 7. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Um, hold on. There's another place I want to read it out of. I wanted to read it out of Mark. Okay, because Mark adds something you know, Jesus repeated himself, I'm sure. You know, as <laughs> in his three years, he preached the same thing. And so this was tucked in the verse where he cursed the fig tree that wasn't producing fruit. And they came back and it was withered. And the disciples were like, what? <laughs> and um, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, go, throw yourself in the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Okay, now the same paragraph he says, and when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So, forgiveness is the key to our, like, we have to forgive to be forgiven. And it's also, unforgiveness will block answered prayers. Um, even in the, in the other scripture where it's telling, Jesus is telling us how to pray. He says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who hold debts against us. So, if you have any unforgiveness, get that dealt with. Get that dealt with. Because, here's the thing. You can't have unforgiveness in your heart and actually care about other people's eternal souls. Forgiveness comes when you recognize you are a sinner, saved by grace, receive the grace of God for yourself. And then when you have recognized how your need for God only came by his grace and love, it springs forth with gratitude so much so that you can't hold things against other people. You know, you can't. How can you hold something against other people when you've been forgiven for so much? And so it's about more than forgiveness. It's about you're not going to have a pure heart. You don't have a pure heart if you're holding unforgiveness. You, you need to ask the Lord to help you to purify your heart so that you can get to that place of um, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, you want forgiveness. You want grace. You want salvation, even though you don't deserve it. So do unto others as you would have them do. And you want that for them as well. And so I'm just, I don't think that this requires much more lengthiness, Lord. You know, you might say, well, the things that I'm wanting, I haven't really see how that fits in with other people being saved. You know, but if God's put it in your heart to have a godly marriage, you know, godly marriages, you know, divine kingdom marriages are huge. You, you minister to your neighbors, you minister to family members, you serve in the church, whatever it is, that is 
a kingdom mindset to want a kingdom marriage or you know it is you know maybe some of your desires are kind of greedy and you can lay them on the altar and say lord i don't know if this is you know i feel like my heart might be a little greedy about this so i'm going to lay it on the altar i'm going to give it to you you can give it back to me redeemed or all can i can set it down i only want what you have for my life i want to be used i want to be um you know a functional part of your body helping to bring in this end time harvest whether it's as, as an intercessor whether it's greeting people at church whether it's serving others you know whether it's showing mercy whether it's being an encourager whether it's uh working in some industry where you can make lots of money or even a you know sewing a little bit wherever you you know are led to sew the lord is gonna use all of us in our various places and um, he wants all of us to have this mind that is like the mind of Christ. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He knew where he came from. He knew where he was going. He knew his purpose on earth. And he understood that his time was short here. And, um, and we don't know when we're going to be called home. So we need to be aware that at any time, you know, there's a scripture about uh, it's a, a parable about a, a man who had a really good harvest and his barns were full and you know they were overflowing and so he's like I know I'll build myself a bigger barn I'll have bigger storage what they could about anybody else wasn't realizing the blessing of God and provision is to be poured out any blessing the Lord gives us we better pour it back out and give it right back to him or it will corrupt us I'm not saying that you have to give every penny you have away but you have to be willing Lord, whatever it is you've given me, I'm pouring it back out to you. If you've been given a godly marriage, you pour that marriage out to be used by him. If you've been given, um, you know, a position of authority, you pour, you know, humbly, humble in yourself, just pour it back out to be used by him. But, you know, Jesus telling this parable about the man who just stored up more and more stuff for himself. He said, you fool. Didn't you know that tonight your life was going to be required of you now? Who's going to, you know, who's going to get your stuff? Oh, Jesus. Purify our hearts, Lord. Give us your heart for people. Give us your vision. Even if you're not an evangelist, even, you know, I pray God open your eyes to the opportunities, the people that you're to pray for. If you're out walking, pray over the houses. Be interceding for others. Pray over your spiritual leaders, you guys. Pray over spiritual leaders because they get hit hard because the enemy knows if you take down spiritual leaders, then the people, you know, that are following them are going to have a harder time with it. The people who they are covering, you know. So pray without ceasing. Do the will of God with pure heart and your prayers will be answered. This is a video to ask. I want you to guys to ask. Pull a tide with the Lord and ask. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Just go and ask. Sit there and hear what he wants you to ask and then ask him for it. And let your faith arise. You know, practically speaking as a seer, a lot of times God will put prompt me for something. Like, I have to see it. And sometimes my faith hinders me from seeing it. I'll sit there and try to see it working out. And I will not be able to push past seeing it not working out. And I have to really pray into that. And pray for, for greater faith. And as you see what God is showing you. And you pray for greater faith to actually see it. To be able to see it through to completion. Where you have that faith that doesn't, that's steadfast. And that isn't um, double minded, you know. <laughs> Like, I, God keeps, he's, he's got revelation. He's pouring out revelation. He's handing out scrolls. I've been saying this, uh, really, when, when did I start? I saw like a launch. I think it was around, um, Passover. I love you guys. You guys share this. Tag some people. I believe it'll bless other people. And we will talk to you later. I'll be on Sunday at 1030. If you're in the Herndon, Virginia area, if you're looking for a group, a, a local body, you can come Kingdom Living Ecclesia and Academy. We meet at 1030 on Sunday. We meet, um, some of us meet 
for the School of Supernatural 7 on Tuesday, which is really an in-depth Bible study oftentimes. And and then this Friday, tomorrow, we're having uh, the prayer, prophetic prayer and healing room. And that's always super powerful. You get prophesied over, you get prayed for, you get encouraged, and the power of God falls. And, you know, it is in, it's a really good time in the Spirit. A really good time in the Spirit. So that is just a time in the presence of God to receive. So we do that the first, third, and fifth Friday of the month, if there is a fifth Friday. Kingdom Living Academy is the website.org. Um, and, and I think Emily Rose Lewis org is also still up. I need to do some updates on those websites. Love you guys.